Hi, it's Karina. How are you doing? Hey, today I want to talk about how to detox somebody from your mind and your body. It's so funny to me. I've never met anyone who admits that they're the bad guy in somebody's story, right? But we all end up having these people in our lives that end up being toxic to us at some level, you know, and it could be a small kind of toxicity like, oh, I had to spend a week with somebody, you know, on this work thing that I didn't like, or it could be all the way up to somebody who is like abusive or, you know, you've spent years with. So be patient with yourself with these steps because for some people, if they try them, you know, it'll happen very quickly and for some people, it'll take a little more time, okay? Be patient. Step number one. When you find yourself thinking about them, stop thinking about them. <laughs> I know you're like, if I could do that, I wouldn't need this stupid video. Okay, let me explain. So instead of thinking of the specific person and the event that was created, think about it more metaphorically. Like, instead of thinking of their name and all the details of what happened, think of, um, I don't like it when I get taken advantage of or whatever it was, you know, maybe they stole money from you or lied or whatever. I don't like it when I'm lied to. If you keep thinking of that exact person and those exact details, you keep coupling them together with you. So the first thing you have to do is kind of uncouple the specificity of who it is and the events. Otherwise, it just keeps replaying like a movie in your mind over and over again, okay? Step two. Find the stress in your body. So somewhere inside your body is the stress or the unresolved emotion of having been with them. So it's really great if instantly you can catch yourself thinking about them or the event or if you've gotten to the place where you can just think of it metaphorically like, I don't like it when people lie to me or I love it when people tell me the truth but I was lied to. However, you're going to be thinking of that, right? When you find yourself thinking that, scan your body from head to toe. Somewhere inside of you, there's tension residing. I had this really interesting situation where when I was still dating someone, I would look at pictures and I'd always be like this. And my right jaw was clenched all the time. And I was like, what is that? That's so weird. It was already starting to reside in my body before I ever admitted how toxic it was. So sometimes you can look at pictures and you'll see something repetitive like, you know, something in your face or you'll start noticing, oh, my back hurts all the time or whatever it is, scan your body. And when you find it in your body, just wipe it off like this. Okay, so let's say it's in your shoulders and you're like, oh, every time I think of them, my shoulders get all chaotic and raised up or in my jaw, just wipe it off. Your unconscious mind does not know the difference between what you're imagining and what's actually happening. It's so crazy. So let me give you an example. If we all heard this story about green snakes killing people, and we go outside off our back porch and the garden hose is wrapped up right there, where our body's going to react as though it's a green snake, right? And then when we can logically see that it's a garden hose, our mind tells our body to stop having the reaction. But the instant that our mind sees it, it reacts as though it's a green snake because it doesn't know the difference between the garden hose and the green snake. Same thing within your body. It doesn't know the difference between you're just acting like it's being pulled out of your body and it's actually coming out of your body. So use your unconscious mind and do that. Now, let's say it's you know, your business partner <laughs> and you're in a business meeting, you can't be like, yeah, you, like this, you. You can't do that, right? So you get to do two other things. You can pretend like it's happening for you. You can just envision it in your mind if it's inappropriate to physically do it. Or you can envision just some beautiful color coming down into that area and just releasing whatever tension and being replaced with a beautiful color. I like to even add like some sort of glitter or sparkle or anything that makes it really detailed and juicy for your brain to think about. Because the more you can engage your mind, especially the unconscious mind that works in symbols and colors and things like that, the more that it will be effective. 
I promise you it works, okay? Step three, you've got to trick your unconscious mind into an ending that hasn't happened yet. So if you keep getting stuck on the person and the event in the past and how that's affected you today in the present and you don't have an outcome that's positive yet, make one up. Again, your unconscious mind doesn't know. Now, it doesn't mean that you have to pretend like somebody being horrible to you is right. So let me give you an example. Let's pick something kind of extreme, okay? Let's pretend some, and it's probably happened for some of you, somebody was abusive to me. Right now, there's still fear lodged in my body or um, this, uh, you know, resentment or whatever it is. And this is where I am today because they did that to me. Let's trick your mind into a different ending. I was abused by somebody. I was abused. Don't connect to the person or the event. I was abused. It's still affecting me today. I am open to having the opportunity to teach others what the signs and symptoms are of abusive relationships. I was abused. It's affecting me today. I'm open to um, being able to become stronger now that I know how to avoid toxic relationships. So when you find yourself thinking about it, create a different ending. We've got to learn to bring the broken with us. Oftentimes when we end up in toxic relationships, we have this like broken piece that happens inside of us and we keep trying to bury that piece. Our wounds are our source of power, but we have to hold into it long enough to have that come to fruition. You know, it doesn't happen right away. We really have to do some work on it. I want to tell you stories about a story about Hercules. So uh, Zeus tells Hercules, hey, there's this dragon down in a village and it's eating people and I need you to go down and handle it. Hercules is like, perk on the job, got it. Zeus says, hey, before you go, just so you know, you're going to get really tempted to pull your sword out and kill it, but don't do it. I need you to just hold strong while you're going through it, okay? But don't try to kill it. Hercules is like, no problem. Zeus is like, if you try and kill it, it's going to be a problem. Leave your sword alone. He's like, sure. Goes down the village. Dragon comes out. Holds him. <laughs> it gets really intense. So he whoosh, chops his head off, right? He's like, whew, that's close. Two heads grow back. So he's like, hold him again. He's like, oh, remembering what Zeus told him. Okay, I can't, can't, can't. Whoosh, four heads grow back. And it just keeps going and going until a hundred heads have now appeared. And Hercules is just surrounded on all sides. And he's like, I can't, I can't. And he knows he can't pull the sword out anymore. He knows he can't kill it. And he holds and he holds. And right when he thinks, okay, I'm gonna die, the dragon disappears. And he feels something in his hand. And he turns it over and it's a jewel. We can't just keep killing the piece of ourselves that either has been broken by somebody or has been feeling broken or we can't just bury it and move on. We got to hold in there, find it in your body, create a new ending and stop coupling yourself together with the person. Find it metaphorically, hold into it, create that different ending until it's clean and clear and you will be holding a jewel. Let me know how it goes. Thanks.